Alright everybody, I just came across a little situation here I thought I'd like to shoot a quick video and share with you about. Uh, this is a, a water source heat pump from my office here. And uh, it's been cold lately. Um, and I have a bit of a cold, you may be able to tell. And uh, this has been real, this unit has been real um, problematic about going into heating for some reason. Um, Sometimes it wanted to work, sometimes it didn't. Um, at first I thought it was the reversing valve because uh, um, I, when I, I uh, did a little trick and tapped it with a hammer a couple times and that seemed to make it to work. Uh, but apparently um, it's actually the high pressure switch is what was cutting it out. But uh, as you can see here, the uh, very uh, normal, maybe even low discharge pressure. So there's no way that switch would be cutting it out at 200 PSI. So obviously that uh, the fact you know it's one of those uh, factory pressure switches is bad. So what I'm gonna have to do is put a excess T on that uh, on that high pressure on, my, on the high pressure service board there, um, and add a, a, you know, a new pressure switch. Um, so that'll stop happening because uh, normally I wouldn't really care about having heat in my office, but since I'm sick, you know I kind of I kind of need it. It feels good, so. Uh, so this has become kind of a priority to me. And um, I'll go ahead and hook up my low side hose so I can um, drain the pressure off to the low side. I just hooked this up because it was quick. But uh, yeah, um, I, I think I'll just leave the switch jumped out for now because I know it's not a, not a problem, but I'll go to the supply house today. I need a couple other things and I'll uh, pick up one of those screw on uh, high pressure switches like we put on the over at the, at the little building on that uh, rooftop unit. And that should take care of that problem. And, uh, maybe I'll shoot a little update video when I do that. Uh, we'll see. Uh, that's it for now. Bye. Alright, it's pressure switch time again. Um, I got the wrong access tees at first. I got the ones without the depressor, so I had to run back to the supply house real quick and swap those out, but that's no problem. So we got that handled now. So, um, let's see if I can set my camera over here. I also bought some cord depressors because I tried to, I robbed a cord depressor out of my hose, out of one of my manifolds, and, um, but the, these ones, the ones that didn't have the depressors didn't even seem like they were made to have depressors. It was too tight to fit. So, long story short, I ended up wrecking the, depre the depressor for that. So, I bought a pack of them to replace it. Who knows, we never might need one of those again. So, if I set the camera over here, though. Before, we need kind of a picture of what we're doing. This is a high pressure switch. Um, as I said before, this uh, the factory installed one was cutting out on this unit and causing me some problems, and I need our heat right now. So uh, we're gonna fix that by installing this aftermarket one with an access T. Not as nice, but it can be done. And uh, so first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna take an access T off here, little cap. Tighten that valve core in. So you don't need to do that in the factory. Good. Oh, nice and straight on there. Oh, that was a little funky. That has no Schrader in there, so we don't need it for this. Throw that bad boy on there. And my wrenches. Yeah, I need to tighten on there. That thing should fit. Thank <laughs> you. 
that hanging around on the service board up there, so that's what we need for that. Really give that a good, good smash together. We don't want to really take that apart again. So, all right. Um, hoping I can do this video kind of in pieces without really looking too chopped up, because I don't know that I can set the camera up there while I actually install it. So I may have to shoot it yet another video afterwards. But. Uh, We'll see. Let's take a look at it. So basically, since there's a pressure switch factory installed, this is going to be pretty straightforward. Um, I'm just going to take these two wires right here that connected to the factory one. See, they got a little uh, butt connector on there, splice, whatever you want to call it. And uh, I'm just going to—I'll uh, put a, a couple of male. Uh, quick disconnects on the new pressure switch and I'll just plug them right into there And then we'll just forget about that factory installed one that's up there and I can just be a piece of history um, Yeah, I really don't see any place I can set a camera up to shoot This really so I'm just gonna put that on there wire it up and uh, Show you it working afterwards All right talk to you all right, finally got this thing installed. Son of a, son of a gun that it was. Um, I ended up having to replace the service port shader core because it just wouldn't it wouldn't seal up. So um, had to be the uh, shader core, which everything else was tight. So but I replaced the core, got it tightened on there, and it all seems to be well. So not leaking anymore. Um. Anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and. Uh, now that I got it hooked up, I want to make sure that my uh, verify that my switch is good. I, uh, testing continuity, because the switch should be closed right now, as it, there's no way it could be off on high pressure. So I'm gonna go to there, either side of the switch, and it is closed. We're good. All right. Then I'm just gonna take these two wires right here or I guess I should point you those two wires right there that are for the factory pressure switch and these two wires off of the new pressure switch which I've put the male disconnects on and hook them up should be fairly straightforward just like that one there That one to there. And we got the thermostat pointed heat right now, so we'll turn the disconnect on. And there we go. Heating away. What the hell is that? Oh, I just cut out on something else. That's kind of weird. All right, um, a little bit more about this unit. Uh, we had a, also, uh, when I was troubleshooting it the first time, found a couple other issues, and one of them was this control transformer. Um, it was good, um, but the wrong, the, uh, this is a 208 single phase, and um, somebody hooked up the, they uh, hooked up the orange wire, primary wire, to the contactor. Uh, for the high voltage and it was um, th they put it on the 240 volt tap so that was only giving me about 22 and a half volts of control voltage everywhere and that was causing some problems so I switched that out to the proper tap and I got you know uh, more like 25 volts now so that's good um, right now we gotta find out what uh, what just cut this unit out just right now so uh, I did lose, I did notice the charge was a little bit low on this unit. That trader core I replaced was leaking too. Um, so I suppose that it can now be cutting out on low pressure, or maybe the low pressure switch has an inappropriate tolerance like a, the other one did. Or going bad, whatever. And if that's the case, we can get a new uh, 
low pressure switch too. But uh There. Well, it's not cut out on low pressure. Um, I'm going to turn the camera off and figure out what the hell's going on. Uh, talk to you later. Alright, sure enough, this thing was shut off on low pressure. Um, although it seems like this, the low pressure switch, um, when it opened, it didn't close. I charged a little more gas in there and it uh, it closed up, or uh, stayed open rather, um, uh, but I could be a little low still, so uh, I got the switch jumpered out, I'm going to go ahead and turn the unit on, run it, we're on heat right now, and the heat uh, cycle it calls for, manufacturer specs call for a uh, 70, um, 70 uh, PSI, a uh, suction pressure, um, and 225 discharge uh, with a 70 degree, 70 degree water supply like we have today. Um, so we're still down around 50, so we'll go ahead and charge some more gas in there. Just do this vapor. Uh, the suction, the suction side service port is real close to the compressor inlet, so I don't want to uh, risk any liquid slugging. I'll just do it the slow, slow and safe way with the vapor. And uh, and let's go see what our. So then it's 70, uh, 70 discharge, uh, calls for 28 degrees of superheat, which is a lot in my, in my mind, but that's what the, that's what it's supposed to be, so. And hook up my thermometer here. Getting there now, maybe 63 or something. Keep going. But now it's pretty good heat already. about 65 now on the suction side our uh, discharge is still is a little high because we're not never quite there yet so at 70 degrees we're going to have a saturation temperature of about 40 and uh, so with that we're running about 58 degrees on the suction line, so we're doing, uh, you know, maybe we got about 20, 18, 20 degrees of superheat right now. And so we're almost there. Um, I'd like to see the head pressure come down a little bit, but it's, I mean, it does uh, um, our return air is a little warmer. Um, than, it, than it is for the manufacturer uh, specs for the heating cycle, so that's probably the reason for that. We're not going to be perfect. Uh, we're going to run out of time here, so I hope I can piece this together all right.